Okay, we're working on an MSD distributor. The part number on this one is 8361. This one originally came with the Vacuum Advance. MSD has an 85551, I believe. Something similar to that. It's the small block and big box Chevy billet distributor that you have to use the 6AL or 7AL box. This is the exact same distributor as that one, except for it comes with the option for the Vacuum Advance. Now I've removed the Vacuum Advance and I've put the block off in it, so now it is exactly the same distributor. It requires a 6AL or 7AL box. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of questions about these distributors, about um, what is rotor phasing, how do you phase your rotor, what's the proper air gap adjustment for the um, pickup and uh, trigger. Uh, so anyway, uh, a lot of websites are showing that the gap between this little blue thing right here and the the trick the pickup here, um, they're saying it's 15. That's actually not true. I actually have the instruction manual. So if you buy one of these and replace it, MSD says that they want you to check the air gap, and it should be between 018 and 030 inches. Now, when I checked this from the factory, it was at 30. Because I've been hearing a lot of people talking about they checking it at 15 and the bigger the gap is, it causes other issues, I've readjusted mine back to 18. But when I opened it up from the box from the factory, it was at 30. Or actually at 28, it was 028. And I want to explain something to you about that. And that is, when the pickup touches right here at the center, the magnet pickup touches right here on the trigger at the center that is basically zero degrees of timing as it passes or prior to coming to it that's where you get your timing so there's a lot of misunderstanding here about when this cap is on uh, and you put the cap on and you advance your timing <laughs> this is where the phase gets um, off so here it is I've marked it number one cylinder right there, which will be this one here. And if I take my number one and I turn my distributor so that my spark plug wire is facing exactly at number one, which is the rotor right there. And I want to show you guys, I've marked the rotor and I've put a mark down here on my intake manifold so that I know that I'm at number one. And the way I check to make sure I'm at number one cylinder is that I brought my timing marks on my harmonic balancer to zero. Okay, and I am, uh, my rotor is pointing at the number one cylinder. You got to make sure you're not 180 off um, with your cam. That's, you need to take your valve cover off and make sure that both valves are all the way up when you're at top dead center and then you're pointing at number one cylinder. Anyway, so my rotor is now pointing at the number one cylinder. I'm right on the money, okay? And with my cap on, if I point my wire to number one, I should be at about zero degrees of timing. I have no advance and I have no re retard. Now if you look in here at the rotor, you'll actually notice, I've put marks here, I'll put a little blue mark right here to mark right here. Um, when I had the distributor out, I don't know if you can see from inside of there with the camera, but the, these little reluctor here is actually pointing exactly at the pickup. So it's at zero, um, exactly lined up. So that would be zero degrees of timing. Okay, and as I turn the distributor, as you can see, the rotor never moves. Number one is always going to be pointing at number one, no matter what. This does not move. It's always pointing at the right cylinder. Where you get your advance is when you change the position of the rotor. So your advance is in this here, where this magnet pickup points at the reluctor here. That's where you get advance and retard, whether it's before or after. It has nothing to do with where your spark plug wire is in relationship. So what happens is when you advance your distributor, you change the position of where your wire is. Now that can become a problem. And that's where your phasing comes in. Honestly, when you advance your distributor to get your timing, you still want that rotor the rotor to be pointing exactly at that wire number one because that's where you get the best um, and most constant spark and that's why they um, want you to phase your rotor now everybody says drill a big hole in the top of your cap use the timing like and look down but here's another option that I have not seen on the internet and I do believe it'll work 
you line up at top dead center like I told you guys. Get your rotor pointing where it is. Get it top to center. Mark a point on your intake. Now line this up so your distributor cap is at you know is at a at zero and lining at the same spot like at the point. Now just turn your distributor just a tiny bit, and that's probably two to four degrees of timing. Now your engine should start and run. Now adjust your timing in your engine. Get your timing exactly where you want it. Bolt this down. Turn off your engine and bring the harmonic balancer on the front of your engine back to zero or top dead center. Your rotor, like I said, you want to bring this back to zero, top dead center. And then your rotor will still be pointing at the same exact location it was before that you marked on your intake. Rotor and intake. But your distributor cap is going to be moved, advanced or retarded, depending on where you moved it. So let's say you move it here. So now my mark is not lined up with that mark. It's lined up, let's say, right here. So you want to put a mark right there on that. Just put a little mark there. Now pull your cap back off. Now you want to get an adjustable cap. They make them. The part number for this distributor and all the MSD, uh, the 85551 uh, distributor I was talking to you guys about earlier. The part number for the adjustable rotor is 84211. And make sure you get the right one because there's an 8421 and an 84211. And you want the 84211 for this distributor. Okay, and you'll take this one off, and then it's a two-piece rotor. It has a new piece of bolts onto here, and then it's adjustable. And what you want to do is adjust it so now that it's pointing at the new location on the rotor, and now you'll have uh, your rotor will be phased. And I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so I, I've, I've discussed that. We got the the marks uh, 18 to 30 according to MSD instructions. You've got the rotor phasing, and the next thing I want to talk to you guys is about these springs. Everybody says, you know, uh, it depends on the engine you're running and this and that. So I want to give you guys an idea of what General Motors does, like their stock HEI distributor. You usually get total advance on a stock HEI distributor at 2500 RPM. So in theory, if I use a blue spring, a blue spring and a light silver spring, I would and a sil uh, uh, a blue the blue bushing underneath here. There's a bushing that goes under that's probably on the other side wherever the screw is. Uh, let's see if I can see it. Yeah, it's over there. There it is. It's on this side here. There's that screw there. There's a bushing in there. I always run the blue bushing. Okay, blue bushing's 21 degrees, and I'll usually run the blue springs or the blue and the silver. Okay, so let's say you have a small block Chevy and you're running 13 to run one, and you're running 92 octane. You're going to have ignition and detonation. So what you can do to help not get the detonation is put stiffer springs on it. Um, but if you're running like a 10 to 1 small block or a big block, you usually get, start with the heavy blues and you can go to a blue and a light silver. I'm starting off with the two blues and I may end up with a blue and a silver. But um, blue, uh, a light silver, the lighter silver spring and the blue is 2500 rpm with the uh, blue bushing in it uh, and that's probably right where you'd want to be on most most engines but like i said if you have high compression um, there's lots of things that can change the idea but most people don't get get you know they're like well what do i do what do i use so i'm telling you blue bushing and two blue springs will get you close to what you want you'll be uh, about 2800 rpm total advance with this setup right here um, and it'll slow down your ignition just a little bit so you don't get ignition retard if you uh, are under a lot of load if you're towing and things like that with your engine anyway so with the blue bushing um, and the two blue springs I'm going to be at full um, timing at about 2500 rpm my initial timing is going to be about 16 degrees but what I recommend is that you don't worry about setting your timing at 16 degrees you you worry about getting full timing at 25 or 2800 rpm so bring your engine all the way up in this case to 2800 rpm check your total timing it should be around 36 so you're going to turn this distributor until you get it set at 36 then you're going to lock it down 
Then let it idle and see what your initial timing is. It should be around 16. But check it because that bushing could, you know, be a little bit off, one or two degrees one way or the other. So I don't go by initial timing. I go by total timing. The total timing you want is 36. Some people can say 34 to 36, but usually it's 36. So that's what most of the guys are running at the track. Anyway, um, I've seen guys run as low as 1,800 uh, RPM total advance, which would be both Silver Springs. Some people swear by it. I don't go that low. I do 25 and nothing less. So 2,500 would be the blue and the light, light silver. Um, but anyway, hope that helps you guys out. Um, and there you go. Have a great day.